I'm really excited for this because uh, WordPress plugins make WordPress, uh, and it's, it's if it, I can't wait to show this stuff. I have so much to share. But <laughs> let's just start off. Hi. Hi. I'm Anthony Montalbano, and I work for Domino's Pizza. I, I don't deliver pizza. I actually work on their e-commerce platform, and it's, it's pretty kick-ass. I, I, I'm really enjoying the time there. And yeah, I, I love web, and working at Domino's has been pretty cool. But um, what I'm really here for is, well, oh, I skipped a slide. I forgot I should share some information about myself. I like to blog a few different sites, myownname.com. I do personal thoughts. And then a lot of web stuff at Room 3064. There is a lot of other WordPress posts that you'll find there if you're looking for some more information outside of what I'll share with you guys today. Feel free to check that out. Um, I do the Twitter and the Facebook. But we're here for WordPress. And what I want to do is share with you guys some WordPress plugins. And WordPress, this is fun. I love this presentation thing. Plus plugins equals endless possibilities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a few different sites that these are all WordPress sites first. What you're about to see is a bunch of WordPress sites that are just screenshots and there's a lot of plugins that you don't realize they're being used, but if it wasn't for a lot of plugins, the functionality of these sites wouldn't exist. So every site that I'm going to just kind of flash through these real quick are WordPress sites. I'm just going to go through this quick because there's a few of them. But you can see the, I mean, besides design, obviously, you know, Todd did a great talk with uh, themes, and these people did some awesome stuff with their themes, but there's a lot of functionality on these sites that require plugins. And, what we're going to do is kind of explore what some of these functionalities are and how you guys can achieve things on your WordPress site, not just blogs, but site, with plugins. I picked a lot of examples. I like her. <laughs> I like her, too. But yeah, these are all WordPress sites. And it, it, it's pretty cool to realize that you can do these type of things with WordPress. And for the longest time, a lot of people would say, yeah, I don't want to use WordPress because it's, I don't want to do a blog. And I'm like, it's, you can do more than just a blog. And that's, you know, themes and, and plugins make that happen. Of course, WordCamp Detroit website was a WordPress site with cool plugins as well. Here's all of those awesome examples. And a lot, of these, a lot of times people will say, well, what kind of functionality and how can I do this? And can I do this? And well, what I tell them is, yeah, there's a plugin for that. I, I like to think of WordPress plugins. This is, this is a cool site. Maybe if you guys can pull it up, you'll, you'll enjoy this. Welcome to WordPress plugins. This is WordPress plugins. You can do anything with WordPress plugins, anything at all. The only limit is yourself. There's a website called Zombo.com. I don't know if anybody's heard of it. It's been around for ages, like over 10 years. It's strictly a Flash site. It's awesome. And it just kind of says, welcome to Zombo.com. And it kind of goes to the same talk here. But that's how I feel about WordPress plugins, is there are over 11,000 plugins, I think, right now, just in the WordPress repository, which is what people have submitted to the WordPress community on the WordPress.org site. That's just. There, there are so many other plugins that you can do, like use and, and do with WordPress that make this functionality happen. So let's start. This is WordPress.org, and this is the plugin repository page. Uh, if you go to WordPress.org, I, I'm kind of make sure everybody knows this. There's a tab at the top called Extend. If you put your mouse over it, this is actually a new feature. I love it. If you put your mouse over it now, you can click on plugins. It'll say plugins and themes. You click on plugins, it'll take you to the page that you see right here. Now, what's it say, 11,000? I took the screenshot a couple days ago. I'm sure there's over 300 more added since then. There's most popular plugins, new, recently updated. You get the idea. Search. One of the things that I've realized with plugins is you don't know it exists unless you search for it. It's 
pretty simple. So a lot of times when I'm looking for a certain piece of functionality, I don't say, oh, I need to write it myself. I'm a developer. I have the urge to want to write code every single time I think of an idea. But I don't need to if someone's already done it. And more than likely, they've probably done a kick-ass job. And more than I could have done, and actually, I don't really feel like wasting the time if I don't have to. And the cool thing about the plugins that you're going to find here is you don't have to pay for them. And when you don't have to pay for features, and the amount of coding that all these developers have done is phenomenal. Um, I think we should go a round of applause to all the WordPress plugin developers because I, I'm, I'm going to show you guys a lot of things. And all these, I have like over 50 plugins I'm going to just walk through. So hopefully I don't give you too much information overload. But all of these plugins that I'm going to show you are free. So that means that you can literally just go online, search for it, and download it onto your WordPress site today without even paying a dime. I love that. And it's those awesome WordPress plugin developers that make that happen. This is the back end of WordPress. Hopefully, most of you guys know this by now. Um, I can't remember the version number. I'm not always great because it happens so often. I want to say it was like a 2.7 version where they started adding the ability to install plugins from the back end. And you didn't have to be some wicked developer and do the whole FTP, I want to add a new feature and get lost type thing. And now, you, right inside your dashboard, you can click on the plugins and add new, search for it just like you saw on that last slide I showed you, and you find the same results. And you can click on install. It will install it to your site that easy. It, it can't get any easier to add these fun this functionality into your site, your WordPress site. I need to stress that. That's awesome. So what I like to do. I, I like to think of plugins as two types of plugins. You have plugins that do admin setup and maintenance things. These are a lot of plugins that you don't see on the front end, so your users may not know what these are that they're installed or that they're doing things, but they make it helpful for you guys to achieve functionality on your site that you need. Uh, for instance, Akismet's a great plugin. It, it's actually in, it comes with WordPress when you install it. It, it helps remove that people. I hate when people write in my, they're not even writing, they're mostly robots. And they're writing spam comments. This thing just cleans it up for you. And I love that. Um, there's a lot of SEO plugins. This one's the most popular one, so I listed it. it, it you know what I do enjoy? I, I do use it a lot. It, it makes it real easy for adding your, ta your title tags, what happens you see in the browser, and the title that you see up there, um, and then some other information that helps out uh, search engines. It's, it's a good plugin. WP Supercache is another plugin I like to share. Uh, for the most part, most people don't have problems with heavy load on their site or a lot of people visiting it. But it can happen, and I hope it does happen because it's awesome. You need WP Supercache to, to help you. This will, I won't get into the, the details of what it does, but it kind of makes it easier for your page to load faster. It does make it easier to make for your page to load faster. Um, and especially you have a lot of traffic this will help out significantly. So use a, use a, a cache plugin. This one is a good one. Google Analytics for WordPress. Um, there is a awesome developer. And while I'm blanking on his name right now, um, he's awesome. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> I can't even think of his name. But he's done so much for the WordPress community. He's given out so many. If anyone can help me, that would be wonderful. What's his name? Yost, Yost Devalk. There we go. It just it came to me. Yost, he has done a, an amazing set of plugins. And Yost, was it Yost.com, I believe, is a site. And you can check out some of his stuff. Anyways, Google Analytics for WordPress is one of his plugins that I enjoy. There's a, there's a few other WordPress analytics plugins out there. This one allows you to achieve some functionality that allows you to really take hold of what Google Analytics allows you to do. Um, you can do things such as track authors and, and being able to compare how much traffic one author is getting to another. That's something, for instance, this plugin has built in. And that's kind of an advanced feature of Google Analytics that requires setup. This plugin helps you out and just kind of does it for you. It's a great plugin. Um, WPDB Backup. I think I talked about a few of these twice, but I'll skip over them if I call them across them again. WPDB Backup is a plugin that will back up your database 
which is all your post content. So every time you write posts, every time you have comments, all of that stuff, gets saved to a database. And the thing is, is if your site happens to crash, like more than likely, I hope, you have the files when you install the site. You would have the files locally, but more than likely, you probably don't have all that database stuff. And it's hard to always remember, I, I need to go back up my database. Who thinks of that, really, honestly? So WPDB Backup helps you do this. It, when you install it, it gives you the options to choose to have that database emailed to you. So what I suggest, go get a Gmail account because they're free and they're big. And for every WordPress site that you have after you install this, say update, however, you can have the frequency daily, weekly, monthly. I prefer weekly mostly. And it will automatically just take your database and zip it up and send it to you in an email. It's a great way to have an archive of your databases over time. And if something ever does crash, you can easily just go into your Gmail account, find out what version you, you most recently had, and restore it. And this plugin also allows you to restore the, the database. So once you get the site back up and running, you can go ahead and restore it. Great plugin. So th those are a few examples of the backend admin plugins that you could use. Uh, I'm going to go through some more later, but I just kind of give you an idea of what I mean by admin setup maintenance type plugins. That's what those do. The other type of plugins that we work with are the front end things. This is what your users will see. These are adding the functionality and the feature to make your site the site that your users want. That it, it makes things easier. And next gen gallery, I'll just jump right into them. Next gen gallery is a a gallery plug plugin. If you're looking to do images on your site and you want to crop them or you want to put them into different categories and you can do all kinds of stuff. I'm going to go into some of these more in detail later. I just want to give you guys an idea of what I mean by the two different types of plugins I like to think. Sexy bookmarks. I like the name. This, this plugin I'm, I'm using on the wordcampdetroit.com. It's those little, when you see the Facebook and the Twitter and you click on them or you put your mouse over them, they hover up. I think that's awesome. I don't know. I, I really think it's a, the user experience behind that for the social media connection is kick ass. Love the plugin. Uh, Twitter for WordPress allows you to stream your Twitter uh, content right to your site. And then WP e commerce is a plugin that does, allows you to sell things online. So if you're trying to sell products, uh, check it out. It's, it's cool. But what I want to do is this is going to be fun. We're going to go through about 50, I can't remember the exact number, 54 plugins. I'm going to go through them kind of fast. I will have all this stuff online afterwards. I just want to make sure that you guys can, I want you to really, truly realize how powerful WordPress is with plugins because you can do anything with WordPress and plugins. And, and you're going to see that right now with a, a great collection of plugins. Google, and these are the actual names and the links, and like I said, I'll share this later. Google Ajax translation, if you have a site that is international and you want to do a quick translation without paying some type of service, Google translates a, it's good enough service, and it works. So this plugin will translate the content of your post to any other language, and you give the option where they can you know, click on it and say, oh, I want to speak in Turkish, and it, it does that for you. Here's that Nuxion plugin I was talking about. So this thing here, you can upload a lot of photos. And I, I've used this many, many times. When you upload the photos, you can do many options. You can put them in categories. You can have them display what, there's like, like these things called light boxes where when you click on them, that doesn't reload the page, but they kind of appear like it's hovering over the content of your page. Kind of looks like this. So you'd actually see the photo like that, and then you can kind of press the arrows and scan through the slideshow of photos. This has all that functionality built right into the plugin. It even has the ability, like, another thing I like to do with my photos is have a watermark. I hope you guys know what watermarks are. So on the bottom of the photo, I can actually have, like, my logo on the bottom of it. This plugin will do that. It'll, you can upload a photo and say, I want it in the bottom right-hand corner of every single photo that I upload on my website, and it does that. I think that's really cool. This is, if you're looking to get information sent to you from your users, if you have a contact us form, if you have, um, if you're looking for questions, or anytime you want people to submit information to you, instead of just putting your email address out there, some people enjoy doing that. Um, here's a way to at least organize it and make it easy. Good plugin. If you're doing um, 
this is for podcasting. It's a pretty solid plugin. It it allow you to if you're doing type of audio podcasts and you want to submit your stuff to iTunes and and some of the other streams of podcasting. This actually creates the feeds that when you go to create your iTunes podcast setup, you can get the stream right here and it'll plug it in for you really easy. Video, was it Viper's Video Quick Tag? Sometimes the names, I, I heard this at a, uh, I was listening to, actually, Jeff, your uh, podcast from OpenCam. And I totally agree. There's, an, there's another awesome girl in the WordPress community named Laurel, and she did a similar talk with some plugins, and people's names of plugins are interesting. Like, why Viper? I don't know. Maybe that's his name. Maybe it's his code name. But if it was just video quick tags, I would be perfectly happy too. This, this plugin allows you to input video on your site from all kinds of sources. And it makes it really easy. I think, I don't know if I took a separate slot, screenshot, I didn't. So with this video quick tags, you can do customization for your YouTube videos. So if you want to change the color of the layout and the design of your YouTube videos on your site, this makes it really easy without having to manipulate code or do some of the other crazy things that make it happen. This plugin handles that. So if you're looking to add video to your site, here's a plugin that makes it easy. If you're looking to add audio to your site, if you're maybe not the pod press, but just add audio that you're not looking to submit, this is a real simple plugin. Um, when you go to add content, if you're familiar with the WordPress uh, post page and the, and the pages where you can hit the add audio, add video, those little icons across the top, you can do that with the audio. And then it adds like this new button, it says audio player. So instead of just posting the URL of the, the audio MP3 file, you can actually just put the player. And that's what this plugin does. It's cool. WordPress Download Manager, if you're looking to share files, this plugin does a great job. So if you're, I mean, even if you're looking, if you have a site for your own self and you want to put your resume online, you can use this and, the PD, and upload the PDF through here and, and get the site, get it on your site this way. This will track the number of downloads and you can shut it off or on and that kind of stuff. Makes it really easy to feature files on your site if they're, you know, like PDFs. If you want your users to rate your content, GD star rating. It's this plugin. There's a few plugins out there where they're so feature intensive, it's amazing. And they're free, and that's what's great. GD star rating is one of those. It has an insane amount of features. I haven't even explored them all myself, and I've used this plugin multiple times. You can see like all the tabs across the top. They, you can see how many options in the first tab. Can you imagine how much options there are through each one of those tabs? Your customizable options are endless, and that's great. Here's an example of what it looks like on your site. You can, I'm sure you've seen some of those star ratings before on some other sites. If you want to add them to your site, this plugin does it. So there's a few other, those are mostly content driven plugins based off of how you can get content on your site. I want to talk about a few other plugins that these are the, some of those admin maintenance plugins that you can do. WP Invoice is, a, is a actually a pretty interesting plugin because I'm sure if any of you guys are using other invoicing systems out there, you may have to pay for it or um, it doesn't have some of the features you want. Well, you can do your invoicing right from the back of WordPress. And Here's a plugin that does that. I'm telling you, you can do anything with WordPress plugins. Calendar, real simple. If you're looking to add a calendar to your site, if you want to have an event list or just a list of upcoming events, you can add it into your widget of your sidebar, and that's awesome. That's what you can do with that. So this one's called User Role Editor. Let me give you a little bit of a scenario. There's there's two plugins I like to use in conjunction, or another one that I like to use in conjunction with this one called uh, Ad Minimize. But what this allows you to do is if you have multiple people logging into your WordPress site, you may want to limit the functionality of what one person can do with the other. So what you would do is, the first thing you do is I like to create this user role editor. And it gives you some options where you can select what type of features are available to that user. But the thing is, is there's, there's more options than that. And especially this is, oh, I'm going to jump right to the next one. There's one called Add Minimize, and this one allows you to choose the functionality available to the different user types. So the first one, you create the user. The second one allows you to choose what's available to that user. 
This plugin's great because it picks up other plugins. So there's obviously in the back end of your WordPress site, you'll have other options available to other plugins. Not all plugins, but I would say 90% of plugins that you install, this ad minimize will pick it up. So if you have, for instance, a photo gallery, the, the, the next gen gallery, and you install that, and you only want to give an X type of user type to edit the photos, you can, it'll appear inside of this plugin. It'll say next gen and some of the functionality behind that, and then you can limit the functionality of what that user type could do. So between the, uh, was it user, role editor, and add minimize, these plugins work great together. When you're in development, there's a lot of times where you don't want people to see what you're working on. And instead of, th this plugin allows you to put some type of a message up and say, we're in maintenance mode or, or it's down or something, and you're just maybe updating a theme. or It's maintenance mode, it, you can customize it. This is what the uh, default looks like. You can set the number of time when it comes back live, so if people are curious when they can come back to your site, you can put a tom uh, timer on there. So th this plugin is great. If you're looking for, trying to figure out what theme you want to use, and, and maybe you're looking to switch, if you're doing a redesign of your site, and you don't know what theme you're gonna use next, and you don't want people to see what theme you're testing, this makes it great. This is called Theme Switch and Preview. You can set, certain users that can only view the new theme that you're installing. So that way you can say, okay, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And it won't affect your, your other users. It's, it's cool. There's times where, and this has been something I'm sure in the web community that's been like this for a while, and I know like HTML5, CSS3 fixes a lot of these things, but people are like, well, I want this font on my website. And, it's like, I don't want to do images, and you want it to be the whole SEO friendly kind of stuff. So there's a couple technologies out there that make it easy to basically have any font on your site. And it's called Kufon. Um, this plugin enables the Kufon for WordPress. So it's, you install this plugin, and then you can drop some font, you know, those TTF files, you can drop them into uh, a directory. This will recognize them and allow you to apply those fonts to your site. And then you can do anything, like the cursive writing, whatever you want to do. It's cool. Yeah, you can adjust the size. Yeah. There, there's also times where you upload photos, and you want to edit them. And, and maybe you don't have Photoshop, or you don't want to use GIMP or any other crazy photo editor. And you just want to do simple things, such as cropping it or, or just resizing it. There's a, a plugin called Scissors and you can install it and pull up photos and crop and grab and, and do whatever you want with the photo. Like, it's just minimal things, but a lot of times those, that's what 90% of people want to do with their photos on their WordPress site. You can do it all from the back end. Okay, so with WordPress 3.0, there was this new feature called content post types. It's, it's kind of, right now, more geared towards the developers and it makes it so that you can have different types of posts. Um, but there's this plugin out there called Flutter, and I've used it many times, and I still recommend using it because it's great from a user perspective. If you're not a coder, then this plugin still works great. What you can do is, for instance, if I was doing movie reviews, and I want to post the different reviews on my site, and you want to like kind of structure the way your reviews look so it has like a systematic form on your site, you can do this with Flutter. So what, for instance, going back to the movie reviews, if I want to have the rating, uh, maybe the movie art poster and the duration of the movie, you can put all of those different options into the post type. So you can see at the bottom here, what it does has is like MPAA rating and then duration and then a movie poster. And you can hit like browse and upload the photo. And what you can then do is customize your theme so that it displays this content the way you want and you have a structured format of showing the information you want on your site. So if you're doing any type of site that has that structure, uh, Flutter is a great solution for that. Th I like this plugin because a lot of times when you are writing posts or content, you're gonna go online other places and look for photos and you're gonna look for videos and you have to obviously you leave the back end of WordPress and go on Google more than likely. 
This plugin adds this insight feature where you can search for photos, you can search for content, all from the back end of your site. So right under like the post content box where you're writing your stuff, there's this new search, and it doesn't refresh the page, which is great. And I can go right to videos, search for videos, and I see a video I want or a photo I want, I click on it, it automatically creates the code and just posts it right inside your, po in your blog. It makes it really easy to add content. Inside of the WordPress content writer, if you're in the visual editor, do you guys know that there's like the editor functionality in the visual? This, the visual is what most people will use because it has the, the word type features, Microsoft word type features, the let's bold things, let's create bigger fonts. And this tiny, it's, they're called tiny MCE is the functionality. This actually adds additional features. So you can add the ability to add tables or um, justify quote. You can see there's the options. So if you're looking to do additional functionality outside what the current editor does, this will give you that option. After the deadline is a awesome WordPress plugin. Um, it's a spell checker. And it's not just your basic spell checker. It's got this AI intelligence engine behind it that is awesome. It, it can it can give you suggestive words and, and make it really easy to correct what you're writing because maybe we're not all the best writers out there. And check this out. It's a, it's a great spell checking plugin. And grammar too. And it's written by a guy in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, and actually now that's a, um, an automatic plugin too, which automatic is a little bit behind the works of WordPress, a lot behind. WP Auto Tagger is a plugin that a lot of times when you're writing posts, you, you may skip over the idea of, oh, I, I need to, to tag it and add tags to those posts. And what this will do is it uses um, a Yahoo API to go out and read the content of what you just wrote and automatically figure out what tags are best or most relevant to your content. So you can just literally, there's a button that says suggest tags, or you can have the option where when every single time you save a post, it'll automatically read the content that you just wrote and then put tags. It'll just add the tags to your post. So that way, if you don't want to worry about it, just, and I mean, they're not the greatest, but for the most part, they, they work great. And you can obviously go through and cross out the ones that you don't think are pertinent to your content. This is a great one because I'm a developer and anybody who's a developer, there's times where you want to add lib code into one of your posts. Exec PHP allows you to execute PHP code inside of your posts. So then you can do your less than question mark and blah, 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 PHP code. So if you're a developer, I'm, I'm hoping you guys use this plugin. Here's that Google Analytics for WordPress plugin that I was talking about that Yoast did. I love this plugin because it, it really utilizes a lot of Google Analytics features. You can see you can track logged in users, authors, categories, tags. And there's a, a few other features that you can do behind this. That if you understand Google Analytics a little bit more, if you're really advanced with it, you'll realize that this plugin handles a lot of that functionality for you. And you don't have to go through it and set up Google Analytics tags at this kind of builds them right into WordPress. It's, it's really cool. So I, I should probably put a little precursor to some of these plugins because they, these are, I guess, SEO friendly is a good way to put this. These are plugins that, these are features and functionality that you should have on your site. Um, there's this robots text file. This is a little geeky techy. But there's this Roblox text file that you should have on your site. And this will tell the search engines like what content to crawl. It's kind of cryptic to write these things yourself. So instead, use a plugin to do it for you. That's what Robots Meta does. Sitemap, same thing. You want to give, this will actually, the search engines will read these. And they'll say, when should I update content? 
Google XML sitemap, so it reads the sitemap. This will automatically create it. So every time you write a new post, it'll automatically update your sitemap file. It's, it's cool. I love when things get automated because it makes life easier. And you can just, you can get to focusing on what you want to do the most, which is create content. And these, these are, all these plugins, you install them, you set them up, and let them do their magic. WordPress File Monitor, this is a security plugin that I wish I had installed on one of my blogs two months ago because I'm still fighting on one that I lost and I'm really sad about it. But this thing here will monitor the files and when they're changed. So if something gets added or removed or deleted or modified, you'll get these alerts. And it's, if you have, you know, if your site, you feel like it's going to be attacked, you'll get these notifications that something was changed. And that way, if you have some Turkish site that someone took over and you get these crazy skulls on your site, you'll be notified immediately instead of weeks later when you decide to visit your site and realize that you have crap on it. So WP Content Filter allows you to remove cuss words and other words that you don't want on your site. So if you happen to be writing and you're really angry and you happen to use the F word seven times, you can block those out. It also allows you to block out comments too. So if someone's like, I hate your blog, you can put those stars around it. So over here, I didn't put any words. This is actually the default because I didn't want to spell out you know, all the cuss words and you guys get to see them in my slides. It would have been cool to see how many I can come up with, but I didn't. You can get creative when you do it yourself. But this will, those will they'll put the stars over the words. It's, it's a cool plugin if you have bad words that you don't want people to read. Here's that backup plugin I was talking about where the biggest, fun, the biggest feature behind this plugin that I, I always stress is the scheduled backup where I will, I have a Gmail account where I just push all my WordPress site database backups and this plugin does it for me. I never have to remember to, oh, I need to back up my database. This does it for you. Replace. There's been a few plugins. This is a newer one that I'm, I'm enjoying that I've been using lately. There's been times where if you want to repla replace certain words in your site automatically, this will do that. Let me give you an example. Say every single time you mention the word Facebook in a blog post, you want to automatically link to your Facebook profile and you don't want to go and have to remember, oh, I need to make a link for that, this plugin will do that. So what you do is you, you say, this is what the word is, and then I want to be replaced with a link to my Facebook. And then it'll then go through all your posts and all the content and replace it, and it just makes it easy. The possibilities are endless, and I'm not going to get into regular expressions because you can do that with this plugin, but when you understand those things, if you guys do, I hope some of you do, it's, you can, I love it, I do. What, what these there's a couple of plugins I wrote one of these but I had to I wanted to focus on jQuery is this awesome awesome JavaScript library and you can do some amazing things with it the thing is is it requires a little bit of code ex, you know understanding code to get those incorporated into your site well it's if you can find a plugin to do it for you then that makes it all the better then you can incorporate these awesome jQuery features and into your WordPress site without having to do code. So for instance, this, there's this one called jQuery image lazy load. If you have a site that's really, really intense with photos and you have like this really, really, really long blog post and it has like 45 photos and if you can only imagine the load for somebody, for that thing to load, it would take forever. There, there's this concept of all the photos that you don't see on your screen, they don't load until you scroll. So that way, when you start to scroll, the photos will automatically load. And they're only loaded when necessary, which makes things faster. And faster is awesome. And then a, a friend of mine actually came up to me. And he's like, oh, I wrote this awesome jQuery plugin that uses CSS to do your little smiley faces instead of the images. And I was like, oh, cool. Let me write a WordPress plugin for that. And it's pretty cool. He did an awesome job. And I figured it's a, it's a great plugin to use and he did a lot of awesome emoticons that you can see a lot more than the standard including like pirates it's awesome 
there was, I, I love this idea of this fuzzy time. And fuzzy time is if you look under the, my post title, it says eight months ago. So instead of having the date where it says 7 8 2010, you can use this idea of fuzzy time where if you wrote a post, say yesterday, it would say yesterday. Or if you wrote a post that said last Friday, it would say last Friday or last year. It uses the idea of fuzzy time and not a very strict, you know, a date. That's what this plugin does. I, I like that. So there's two plugins that I'm going to show you here that allow you to add ads. I'm sure there's AdSense or other ad networks that you'd like to add to your site. Some of them are pretty advanced and some of them are really simple. Sometimes I like to just go towards the simple ones. Advertising management, it literally gives you it, eight different locations where you can add ads. You just take your AdSense code, paste it in here, and it'll tell you like above blog post, below blog post, above comments, below comments, and you can do that. And the thing is, is you don't have to just put ads. If you are, say you're writing a book and you want to talk about your book or you want to feature something of yourself, you can do that too. Say, oh, I want to add this HTML code below my posts on all my posts. It, you can use the plugin to do that as well. I feel like I just skipped one. Maybe I didn't. So WP Greetbox is a plugin that it allows you to customize your site to where your people came from. So if someone searched for some content on Google and then came to you and then clicked on your link and came to your site from Google, you can customize and say, hey, Googler, here's some other things that you may like. So there might be different sources where people are tailored to, for instance, Google that you want to share and maybe you want to greet them differently than YouTube or some other channels that your sources can come from. This is a, a great plugin that allows you to do that. Here's the plugin I was just looking for, WP125. The 125 by 125 ads have been a real, but really popular lately. And a lot of people are like, well, how can I get those on my WordPress site? This one does it really simple, and I like it. So here you go. The Facebook, right? You can click on the whole like functionality, and now you can extend it to your site. Simple Facebook like allows you to add this functionality on the bottom of your post or above your post or wherever you want to put them. And then you can click on like, and then they'll show up on those people's Facebook streams. And it's cool. I like it. Here's that sexy bookmark. So it's a picture of what it does. I think you guys get the idea. But cool plugin. This is a, a, a plugin that's been around for a while, and I, I do enjoy it. There's been times where you'll have people that will write or they'll respond or comment to something that you wrote about, and you'll get these threads where people are writing blah, 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 and they just kind of respond back and forth, and they have this conversation on your site. This here allows people to subscribe to this comments that they're writing, and that way they'll get an email notification saying, hey, so-and-so just wrote in response to something you wrote or on the same stream, and that way if you want to continue the conversation, you can get the updates. Cool. Here are five plugins. Delicious, Last.fm, Twitter, Netflix, Flickr. The whole idea of this live stream where you can share what you're doing on other services. Uh, for instance, if I book, bookmark something on Delicious, if I listen to a song on Last.fm, um, if I tweet, if I get a movie off of Netflix or if I upload photos to my, my Flickr, all of these things can be then streamed to your WordPress site and each one of these plugins make that possible. So you install them and you put your username in, you tell it where you want to go. Most of them have a widget, which is great. You can just add it to your widget category and you can see here, like this is on my site, I'm sharing Twitter, uh, Last.fm and Delicious. I like it. I need to add Netflix. I like that too. I do want to mention that there are paid plugins out there as well. And these are a few that I've used and I do like. So I'll just show you guys and check them out. Shop allows it, it's e commerce. Gravity Forms is a great plugin for actually doing forms at a much more user friendly basis than some of the other ones. Excellent design. 
Uh, backup Buddy is a one-up on the WPDB backup I was talking about, where it doesn't just do your database, but it also does files. That's cool. Uh, Wishlist Member allows you to create your own exclusive community sites and create a membership site. So if you're looking to do that, you can do that with Wishlist. Here are more plugins. WordPress Mobile Edition, make your site mobile friendly. Don't know how to do that, use a plugin for that. If you want to convert words for Talk Like a Pirate Day, there's a plugin for that. If you want to feature, if you go to wordcampdetroit.com, if you guys are familiar with those, those pictures that are fading and loading and doing those cool, let me show you text at the bottom. How do you do that? The feature content plugin allowed me to do that. I didn't have to do anything fancy. I installed a plugin. It makes me look like I have an awesome website with these plugins. And I didn't do much but click a couple buttons and say install. Simple Captcha does the are you human when they write or post to your comments. So you have to fill out QXJR or something. Yet another related post plugin. I like, everybody likes the name of this one, and I agree. It's, it has its weird catchiness to it. This plugin will feature other posts that are related to what you just currently wrote. And then we have the community news. This is a CUD plugin for having people submit content, and maybe you just want to show up on the widget. So it's like, oh, on the sidebar, I'm sorry, the widget sidebar. You could just have like a couple categories and say, oh, submit your own news to this site and allow all the other users to read it. I'm done, guys. I was once told that no presentation is complete without a lolcat. So I did one. And that, and that means that it's a great presentation because I did a lolcat. Or so I'm told. What so do we have any questions? Jeff? thinking. I, I have sites that have like 40 plugins installed. So I, I think anytime that you can enhance the user experience is always a good plugin to, to look into. Um, there's no plugin that's coming to mind right now, like one plugin. But every time that I can make it easier for the users to get the content I want to share, I try to find a plugin that's most, that works best for that topic. So whatever you're trying to share, if you can find a plugin that does that really well, that's um, probably a must have because it, it makes it easier for users to digest the content you're sharing. Go right here in red. Uh, with the Google Analytics for WordPress, is this something that the, the Google people can observe and monitor and decide whether or not they want to take down my site and stuff like that? No, it's not going to, it's, it's just going to track information and show analytical things like your visitors and your users and uh, where they're coming from. And it's nothing that it will affect uh, what Google's going to do to your site. Uh, 
it's more for you to make an analysis on the behavior of your site and then determine how you want to move forward. So a lot of people just install analytics and just like, oh my god, I have 5,000 visitors this month. I'm like, okay, cool, what are you going to do about it? And that's the thing is you need to not just look at analytics, but do something about it. And that's what this plugin does is it shows you this information. And, and that plugin too, I, I love it because it doesn't just show information, it, it creates different chunks of reports that makes it more pertinent to what you're looking for, like author information. I like that when I get easy information. So the question was, sometimes when you add plugins through the back end, it asks for FTP information. This is a host-to-host -host basis, uh, depending on the security and the setup of the host that you're using. Um, this will happen. More than likely, you can get the FTP information from your host and enter it in the fields. It's a lot easier than downloading some FTP client and learning a new program. So. It is the case in some hosts, but yeah. You mentioned all the SEO, and uh, I noticed that there's one another one called Latin SEO that looks really similar. Have you compared it to and figured out what the difference between? I, I haven't compared. There's a lot of SEO plugins. I mean, there's Headspace is another one that I hear a lot of times, and I don't. I haven't done comparisons. No, I found one that I like, and I go with it. And sometimes I'll look at them and say, oh, does it have a feature that I really must have? And if that's the case, then I'll use it. But more than likely, I mean, SEO is just a, it's a, it's a small perspective to your site. You should, content's huge. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with it. It does what I want it to do. Sure. Well, thank you for that. Black. Um, yeah. Do you know any good plugins for um, thumbnail? So, like, say when you have an image, you want a thumbnail to be created, and then you open up your blog to that. Next gen. That next gen gallery, it has an insane amount of features and functionality you can do with your photos, including setting the preset size of your thumbnail. So, if you can say, I want it 50 by 50, it'll do that. Honestly, if you just install some of these plugins and and play with the features, you'll be like, whoa, I can do that. That's cool. The replace plugin, does that go through cache posts to replace them? Is it a live replace or does it actually change the It is a, a live replace, yes. And then if you have like a cache plugin, then it'll cache that cool stuff and make things load faster. But yes. The, the all-in-one SEO plugin allows you to do this where underneath your post you'll have this adi additional box and then you can go add the additional meta tag information for that particular post. I'll take two more. I'm looking for a plugin that will do, well actually two of them. One where I can do printable posts and two where I can do like a subscriber newsletter. I had one that worked for a while and then it had all sorts of issues. I don't know any plugins off the top of my head. Um, I have used a print plugin in the past before and it worked great. When you search for plugins, I, a lot of people are afraid to install plugins. If you have like some test sandbox where you're doing a site, just install it and try it and, and just don't be afraid to click the install button. A lot of people seem to, they're like, oh, should I do this? Well, it's not going to, like, make the world crash. Sure. It's, a sandbox site is basically the same thing as setting up another site. Um, all right. Yeah, maybe we'll do a... 
Um, we had a, a speaker who will not be able to be here tomorrow. So what I'm thinking about is doing a little bit of demo where we can start demoing some actual how to do things live. I think it'd be pretty cool. And thanks, Todd. I love that. One more question. Uh, I'd like to come to the question. Uh, you mentioned Yoast. Yoast has been working on the new SEO plugin that integrates uh, all the SEO and Headspace. And it's actually looking for people right now to sit down. So if you sign up for a Zoom server, it's looking for professors. Uh, and the question is, um, do you know any plugins uh, that are out there that uh, really integrate uh, Facebook open bread well with WordPress? There, there was a plugin I used. It was like a Facebook Connect plugin. Um, I struggled with it for a little bit. I mean, I had some of the functionality. I, I haven't, I haven't visited it since I played with that one. Um, uh, I, I can't recommend anything, honestly. So, all right. Well, thank you guys very much. Um, this, this is the fun part because we get food. <laughs> <laughs>